242 days to go until May 16th in the release of Prince Caspian. Uh, not much news right now, which is uh, why the uh, um, I haven't done a, a video in a long time. But uh, a couple of interesting pieces, like uh, the fact that uh, the Voyage of the Dawn Treader locations will be uh, Malta, no surprise, Prague, no surprise, and Iceland. Pretty cool. Uh, looking at some pictures of Iceland, I think it sounds great. But uh, since there's not much news, I wanted to take this opportunity to talk about um, something I've been wanting to talk about. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but with all the craziness, I haven't really had the chance. Um, it's the what order should the books be read in? And actually, I probably should establish right up front that um, there are kind of two different issues here. They're related, but they're different. Um, there's what order should the books be read in, and should the books have been renumbered? Those are kind of different issues, as um, I'll, I'll discuss later. But let me just start, in case you, um, some of you don't know, um, what happened exactly, and why, there, why this is such a widely debated topic among Narnia fans. Uh, what happened was, uh, in 1950, uh, C.S. Lewis published uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Uh, it did not have this cover on it. These, by the way, are actually, this is a pre-1994 American edition, which means it has a Fenris Ulf instead of Maugrim. But um, he published The Lion, the Witch, he published the, Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe in 1950, the first book he published. And as you can see, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is book one in the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, it was the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was the first book written in 1950. Then, uh, several years later, uh, he published uh, one uh, book a year after that, Prince Caspian, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, The Horse and His Boy, finally came to The Magician's Nephew, which, as you can see, was book six in the Chronicles of Narnia. And uh, Magician's Nephew explained a lot about um, sort of, the, uh, you know, the, the origin of the wardrobe was the big one, uh, where, uh, who the professor was, Diggory Kirk, and um, the White Witch, the lamppost, uh, the creation of Narnia itself, if we you know it... Um, it explained a lot of things line that was in order that you never really wondered about before, but it was kind of a good, oh, you know, that that's so cool, you know, when you come to it. Uh, Magician's Nephew is a fantastic prequel. Then, in 1994, uh, HarperCollins came along and changed the order of the books. Here's the original order, uh, right here, that started with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And then in 1994... Harper Collins changed the order of the books so they ha so that they were now uh, chronological, which meant uh, the ma magician's nephew first, since it actually happens first. And if you look going to the bookstore today, you'll see that the line the witch in the wardrobe has a number two on it instead of a number one. And uh, so that's what happened. We'll talk about why they did that later. But um, so uh, I better dive right in. I don't really have a lot of time. To, this is such a big issue. First off, I think that uh, the line the witch in the wardrobe. Uh, if just you know take all the numbers off the books and whatever, and just look at just just read it. And the line the witch in the wardrobe was clearly written as the first book. Uh, when the when Mr. Beaver says the name of Aslan, and the children hear it for the first time, it says none of the children knew who Aslan was any more than you do. Whereas if you've already read the Magician's Nephew, you'd be like, well, what are you talking about? I do know who Aslan was. He was in the first book. And uh, also the line the witch in the wardrobe ends where uh, it says that was the end of the adventures of the wardrobe, but it was only the beginning of the adventures of Narnia. And uh, only the beginning of the adventures of Narnia. And so along the witch in the wardrobe, and also the, the whole sense of discovery and the wardrobe and the surprise of it, um, obviously written as the first book. And um, also, if you read Magician's Nephew, it takes away from uh, some of the power and brilliance of uh, the professor's speech. I mean, or he, he logically proves that you really should um, try to believe Lucy's crazy story about a magic world on the closet. He logically proves that. And uh, if you've already read Magician's Nephew, you're like, oh, well, that's because he's been to Narnia. Oh, he, he's kind of fooling them, you know. Um, where he really does make a fantastic point. The movie didn't do a particularly good job with this scene. It was such a, it's a fantastically written scene in the book. Uh, so if you haven't guessed by now, I'm strongly in favor of a publication order. Uh, reading them in the order that Lewis published them, meaning I strongly favor reading The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe first, which is why I keep these books in such good condition, because they're in the correct order. But, uh, so then, uh, The Magician's Nephew works uh, pretty well uh, as a, a standalone book, but I think it works even better as a prequel. Uh, to to, to re go through it and read, you know, oh, uh, the, the lamppost, that's where it came from when the White Witch dropped that bar and grew up into a lamppost. And, uh, and uh, where the White Witch came from, and oh, it's Narnia being created, and Aslan, and uh, of course the origin of the wardrobe, you know. Um, looking back, um, I really should have seen it coming, but the origin of the wardrobe caught me completely off guard. I was like, wow, you know, that's so cool and it makes sense. And um, that was such a great discovery. Whereas if you haven't read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe when you read The Magician's Nephew, 
It's like a lamp post grows up. Um, okay. She turns white. Um, okay. Doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, he turns the magic tree into a closet at the end. You know, it doesn't has no meaning to you. Completely different experience with this book if you read *Line the Witch and the Wardrobe* first, and a much better, more exciting experience of of discovery. Um, so uh, I strongly, the most important thing about the order is, is that you read *Line the Witch and the Wardrobe* before you read *Magician's Nephew*, as we'll talk about in a second. Eh, the rest doesn't matter quite so much, but those are the two really important ones. But the reason that Harper Collins changed the order. If you look at uh, one of the first pages and uh, a copy of uh, the book that has number two on the side, it will say, the Harper Collins editions of the Chronicles of Narnia have been renumbered in compliance with the original wishes of the author, C.S. Lewis. I think the reason they wrote this is because in 1957, uh, an American boy named Lawrence wrote to C.S. Lewis and asked him, uh, what order the book should be read in. Before I go any further, I think I should make it very clear that Lawrence and his mother had already read the books. They were going back to reread them, and this has been a debate among Lawrence and his mom about what order they should read the books in, And now, uh, what, now that they'd already read them. Um, Lewis said, he, I, I think I agree with your order, meaning chronological, for, for reading the books. Uh, so Lewis suggested to someone who had already read them that uh, the chronological order might be better now. And now I've already read the I uh, read the I read the books 20 times, so yeah, I've read them in chronological order. You know, all the stuff about discovery and the surprise isn't isn't really apply anymore. I've already read them, so this is a completely different situation. Lawrence had already read the books and was going back to reread them, and for that situation, Lewis suggested chronological. Uh, Lewis also says that uh, the series was not planned uh, beforehand. He he wrote *Line the Witch in the Wardrobe*. He thought it would be the only book, and he was quite certain that *Don Treader* would be the last book. Fortunately for us, he kept writing, and he says that perhaps it doesn't matter what order the uh, the books are read. And, and he has a point there. We talk about this a lot with the movies coming out. *Narnia* is very much individual stories, not so much an entire series. Although, yeah, it's connected. So you really you could probably start with *The Silver Chair* and then uh, *The Horse and His Boy* and then *Don Treader*, and it, you'd be able to follow and enjoy the stories. Um, he has a point there. But here's where that other issue comes in. Should the books have been renumbered? Um, nowhere in this letter does Lewis say that the books should actually be renumbered, that they should actually replace uh, the number that's on the spine. He never said that, as far as I'm aware. Lewis was alive for several years after the books were published. He died in the uh, same day as Kennedy, and he never asked that the books be renumbered. So I don't understand why 40 years later, um, 40 years or so, Harper Collins can come along and say, oh, well, um, we're going um, to we're gonna comply with uh, the author's original wishes 40 years after the book has been published, and we're going to change it to the way he really wanted it, even though he never asked that, that, the, uh, the book, that the books be renumbered, as far as I'm aware. I mean, and then 40 years later, they go and renumber them. And uh, so th those are kind of two different issues for me. What order to read them in, and should they have been renumbered? I think they absolutely should not have. I guess the next question, um, that's the basic argument right there. I could go into a lot of other things. I guess the next question is, basically, should they number them back? Would that cause more confusion? I'm not really sure. I mean, as it is, there's a lot of confusion about, oh, what order do you read them in? Or, uh, you know, uh, whatever. But um, I think it would be well worth it if they changed it back. And I, I'd buy, you know, ten copies of that set if they came out with it. And I would cherish it if they released another set that had them in the correct order. Uh, one great thing that uh, the movies are doing for uh, Narnia is that it's, I think it's kind of setting the record straight and that they made Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe first. And now they're doing Prince Caspian, and then Don Treader, and then Silver Chair. After that, we don't know. But essentially, they are establishing Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe first. And I think a, a huge number of people... Uh, because of the movie, are going to be introduced to the series with Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe first. So I'm very grateful to the movies for that, for kind of setting the record straight. So that's uh, that, that's my basic argument. I think uh, Magician's Nephew it wor works so much better. It's so much more exciting. I think without Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Magician's Nephew is kind of slow, especially at the end. But if you read Lion, the, w Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and you know what's going on, this is such an exciting read, particularly at the end. And Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, that whole sense of being able to discover Narnia along with Lucy, I think, is very important. So that'll be it. Hopefully uh, we'll get some news soon. Um, um, I'm sure we will. Uh, uh, very rarely do we get a, a dry patch like this. I think this is the big uh, calm before the storm, before uh, the trailer comes out. So uh, hopefully we'll get some kind of an announcement on the trailer or the poster or something big like that will happen soon.